spooky friends and welcome back to the 13 nights of fright on my youtube channel it's your girl olivia back again with another spooky video and tonight we're talking about none other than portland's shanghai tunnels so let's get started now i've been obsessed with underground tunnels and caverns since i learned about like the catacombs that are in paris so i did some digging and actually found some underground tunnels in the states and of course it's in portland and they have a really weird and like spooky history and are probably one of the most haunted places in all of the states so i thought i would tell you guys about it because the story is actually really interesting so back in the early 19th century the city of portland was actually much smaller than it is today and it was actually a really big shipping port on the west coast and what made this city really special is that they had underground tunnels built in order to unload cargo and get them from point a to point b quickly without having to go through all the traffic of the city but these tunnels are for being something extremely innocent and transformed into something completely sinister because of the california gold rush and you might be thinking okay what does that have to do with the gold rush well the people who are working in the shipyards found out that you can make more money working in the gold rush so they left the shipping industry and went to california to work in the gold mines and left the captains of the ships with no crew this is where they had to devise a plan otherwise they wouldn't get their jobs done so they hired crooks to kidnap people which is where the term shanghai comes into place now i know it sounds like weird i guess um but they used this term because the ships would go as far like west as shanghai it's still a weird term but they called it shanghai people and what they would do is they would use the tunnels because each one of the tunnels interconnected into a restaurant or a bar or somewhere so they would pick people from the bar who were extremely drunk and shanghai them this worked because the people who were in the bars usually were travelers from out of town they didn't have people in the area that knew them or really cared about them or would notice that they went missing so what they would do is one person would be like in charge of the shanghai operation they would find someone they think would be a good fit for the ships place their hand on their shoulder, notifying the rest of the crew that was in the bar with them that this was their target and would have trap doors ready for them underneath the bar. What they would do usually is drug the person so that they were kind of lethargic and like loopy, have them walk over to a specific area in the bar and open the trap door underneath them and they would fall straight down into the tunnel. Now you would think, okay, if the person was like waking up from their like drug induced coma, they could probably run away, right? Well, they usually had a couple of people in the tunnels waiting for the target to come down. And they would take off the victim's shoes, put them in like a little cell, and put broken glass and like sharp objects all throughout the floor so that even if they did try to escape, they would get cut up and injured so badly that either they'd be limping down the street and you could find them, or they would just follow the trail of blood. It sounds really bad. And it was because they would keep them there for weeks at a time until the next big shipping yard was going out. And then they would take all of the innocent people that they kidnapped and sell them to the shipping captains for the next like three to five years to work on the ships. There's a term I came across in my research for this video about the Shanghai people on the ship. Have you ever heard of the term long pork? If you haven't, Google it. I heard it in Pirates of the Caribbean one time and once I was researching this topic, I heard it and I was, I couldn't unhear it. But there's an island just south of the Straits where I trade spice for mm, delicious long pork. Apparently the term long pork was used as like a code for cannibalism on the ship because they didn't always have enough food for everybody. So instead they would take one of the Shanghai victims, yeah, um, kill them, cook them up, and then serve it to the crew. It was long pork. They were cannibals. No wonder they were so crazy in their heads. I, gross. Continuing on with the tunnels, in the early 1900s, Shanghai started to die out more, especially because the men who were getting kidnapped started catching on and realizing that, oh, if I go to a bar, I might get drugged, I might get kidnapped and sent out to sea. So maybe it's not a good idea. So instead, um, the Shanghaiers were running out of people and were not making as much money. They started kidnapping women for prostitution rings. They would keep them in cages down below, sell them to anyone who came from overseas or wherever. Human trafficking. They're just a bunch of human traffickers there. I don't know. It's disgusting and it makes me want to throw up. But that's not where the tunnels stop. During Prohibition, they started moving all the bars and opium dens into the tunnels so the police wouldn't catch on. And a lot of the gangs would keep their victims, I guess you could say, in cells in the tunnels. So many people died in these tunnels, which is what makes the tunnels so haunted. There's actually a tour that goes to the tunnels of a guy who's trying to refurbish all of it and save the history because no one really knows the history of these tunnels. And he talks about how haunted these tunnels are. Just listen. <laughs> 
when, when you're doing tours, you see um, people that shouldn't be there. You have people that will tap you on the shoulder, whisper in your ear. Um, also, people feel hot breath on the back of the neck or a little nibble at the ear. The latest thing that showed up was this guy, he was kind of a grayish white, and he was doing this mind stuff. And I thought, who is this guy? And then he started running away into nowhere and disappeared. And I have my flashlight on him and I've had, I was doing, doing a tour and I says, does anybody see the guy I'm looking at? Nobody saw him but me and that's what happens they'll reveal themselves to who they want. The fact that they actually caught ghosts on camera and people see them with their own eyes is literally insane to me. And I, I want to go so badly on this tour just to see what they look like because I've never gone in like catacomb or anything like that before. I think it'd be so cool because I live in Florida and like 10 feet below my feet is water, okay? Um, but if you've ever gone to these tunnels before, let me know in the comments down below because I would love to hear about your experience there. If you saw anything cool, I don't know. But that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big old thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Anything you want. If you wanna to go to these tunnels, let me know in the comments down below because like, me too. Um, give Harold a space, goes down here, a little high five with your mouse to subscribe to my channel because it helps me out very much. But that's all I got for you guys today. I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Bye. I feel like none of that made sense. Okay, bye.